Record. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, so what I need you to do now is so far you have created an account on GitHub. I've added you to the organization. You have created an account on Free Code Camp. Um, you've downloaded VS Code and you have downloaded Git from Git SCM. Download Visual Code Studio Code from code.visualstudio.com. Right. Uh, I need you to download both of those, set them up, and we can open up my. Instead of using my command line, I'll show you guys how to use the command line um, tomorrow uh, with VS Code. Um, set up a uh, Windows subsystem for Linux because there is some downloading and stuff you have to do. You're gonna have to download Ubuntu. If you're on Windows, if you're on Mac, it should be perfectly fine. But in the meantime, uh, let me just open up. Dash. There we go. Oh, all right, cool. So I'm not even configured, so this is perfect for you all. Well, I guess I am configured. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, I would like for you all to keep this bookmarked or uh, just have this handy command line, uh, these commands um, I'm away somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna send this to you all in the chat. And um, you would, uh, Put this in the um, if one if somebody would please put this in the Discord and um, the cohorts announcements. I would really appreciate this and just put, like something that says just add something in the in the in the cohorts announcements and in the information or not the cohorts announcement in the uh, learning group announcements information tab and uh, add something that says just bookmark this get resource. I want to give you another cheat sheet for just regular command line commands. Um, so the bash. Not totally sure. It's, uh, I'll, I'll find it later. All right, so basically, I'm gonna show you the basics of, and if somebody would open up their notepad, all of you open up your notepads, please. Take notes on these commands that I'm about to give you. These are the basics of what you need to work with your command line, okay? So first of all, we're gonna tell Git who you are. And you don't have to put these in your notes right here. Just gonna give you um, the your so there, there's a difference between um, right here, which is uh, this is your uh, show. Um, there's a difference between this and um, between uh, Git commands and basic command line commands. So command line commands, what they are is um, command line commands. They tell your uh, your what to do so um the first command i want you all to type in is pwd um and that should print your uh working directory 
that's so that you know where you are on your computer. Um, and then the next command I want you to type in is ls. And that's going to list all the files that's uh, in uh, that directory that you're on. And what I want you to know is that a directory and a folder, those words are synonymous, meaning they mean the same thing. So, basically, this folder, this web projects folder that I have on my on my on my desktop, is a directory. You know, a folder is a directory. And so the desktop that this web projects folder is in. This, the desktop, the, you have a folder on your computer called desktop. So take a look at that. So for me, I'm gonna type PWD and I'm gonna print my current working directory. That, um, the root, like uh, that C users, uh, C forward slash users forward slash office, it's basically like, uh, that's the I'm at right now. And if I press um, CD space, um, and then uh, tilde, enter. Uh, no matter where I'm at on my computer, uh, the, the tilde is basically like my root folder. So it's gonna take me back home. So no matter where I originally was, it's going to take me back to the beginning, back to my. And this is just so that it's easier for me to navigate um, my computer from the very beginning. Uh, yeah, and uh, anybody um, who has all that noise in the background, if you would please mute your mic, please. Um, or if you're not talking, if you would mute your mic, please. All right, let's see. I got you, bro. Let's see. I don't know how to do it. All right, there we go. All right, so let me just mute everybody. All right, awesome. Okay, um, so now I'll show you more. So CD, that's change directory. And I want you to put that in your notes as well. So. is so that you can change directories. Um, so PWD is print working directory. LS is list the uh, other directories or the other files. It, it, show, it, it shows you what's in your directory. Uh, that's what LS does. It shows you the files or folders inside uh, your current working directory. And then um, CD is so you can change directories. So no matter where we were at originally, if we did CD tilde, that takes us back home to our root directory. So it takes us back to our root folder on our computer. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm a PWD again. And also I want you to know right now that where it says office uh, at desktop 587 or Ming 64 for me, that is, this is my prompt. So this is telling me like in a prompt is um, basically it, it, it's prompting you to enter a command. And uh, it's telling you exactly where you're at on your computer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press, I'm going to type in PWD, see where I'm at. I'm going to type LS again. Um, oh, I need this. And print my working directory. So I'm on C users. And so basically it's my C folder for my C drive and then my users folder um my users directory which is on my c drive and then within my users folder is my office so that's how many folders it takes me to get to where i'm at now uh that's 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 basically when i press that's my root folder at the moment so what whenever you press cd um space tilde you end up at your root so that's my root okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to type ls and i'm going to see what I have to do, so what I want you to do, or, or, yeah, I want you, we're going to navigate to our desktop folder or our desktop directory. 
And so what I have to do to do that is, let's see. What I'm gonna have to do to do that is, what am I gonna have to do? So these are all my files. All right, so cool. The only thing I have to do is I have to press CD and then uh, desk forward slash for to go to my desktop directory. So as you can see, uh, what it has done is it it changed direct. I changed directories into my desktop directory. So now if I press LS, I can see all the files that's on my desktop. Um, so the files that are on my desktop is my web projects folder, right? So that's why when I press LS, it, uh, it takes me, it, like it, it uh, shows me, it, it uh, brings me to my, it, 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 my web projects folder pops up. Now, if, uh, if, if, um, if when you press LS, your desktop folder does not automatically like it's not in the list right there, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to find a way or you're gonna have to find your way to um, your desktop folder. So whatever folders that um, that your root folder is on and however many folders you have to go navigate through to get to your desktop, that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to navigate through your folders to get to your desktop. So let's say, um, Let's say if when I um, was in my root folder, I had to go, I, I might've had to change directories. I might've had to CD into, um, so we had users. Uh, when, I, when I CD'd up here, it said C users office. Now, if I would've pressed LS and the only files that would've popped up is like 3D objects and app data or, or, app, or maybe not those, but just something else like, I don't know like users two or something like you would have to go and find a way uh your way and navigate your way to your desktop um by using the cd command to change directories i'm gonna show you one more command it's called a cd space dot dot and what this command does is it takes you back to the parent directory or to the parent to the parent folder the folder that's above the folder you're currently in so if i press cd space dot dot what it does is it for me since i was already in my root folder and my root folder uh which is c users which is office um it took me back to the folder that's above the folder that i uh, above my desktop folder so now i'm going to change directories back into my desktop and if you, uh for me like what i can do right now also is i can do cd and then since there's only like like a few files in my uh in in my office folder what i can do is i can type cd desk and then i don't have to write the full word i can just press the tab button and it'll finish um writing desktop for me uh so then i'm gonna press enter and now i'm back on my desktop folder and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a directory or we're gonna make a folder and this is we use the mkdir um command and so I want you to type mkdir space, and then I want you to type web projects, web dash projects. I'm just gonna make a test folder, so because I already have a web projects folder, so I'm gonna. Uh, I want you all to make web, uh, a folder called web projects, though. So I'm just gonna do this to show you what happens. And as you can see, a folder called test. Um, has appeared, uh, has been created on my desktop. So now, since I don't want that folder, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type rmdir, which stands for remove directory. Then I'm gonna type the name of that directory, which is test, and it removes that folder um, from my desktop folder. Okay. So now what I want you to do is I want you to change directories into, uh, I want you to go into your web projects folder. So you're gonna press CD uh, space web dash projects. And now, as you can see from our prompt, we are in our 
web projects directory. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna LS and I'm gonna see what's in there. And for you guys, there's not gonna be anything in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a new folder called, um, uh, let's do, let's call it, uh, CMD test. So, or, or no, not that. Let's call it a uh, project one. How about that? So what I'm gonna do to, I'm gonna do mkdir, and I'm gonna type project one. And you have to remember, you can't put any spaces. So you can either do dash one, or in my case, I'm just gonna do project one, no space. And now that has created folder called project one inside of my web projects folder. Um, and it is empty. So if I do LS and, uh, well, no, I actually have to CD into that folder. So CD, uh, what did we just create? Project one, CD project one. One. And if we do LS, there's nothing inside of there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating some files. So what I want you to do is I want you to create a file called uh, index.html. And to do that, you're going to use, you can use two commands. You can either use a command called echo. Or you can use a command called touch. And since we're beginners, I'm going to use the touch command. Uh, so I'm going to use touch index.html. So when I do touch uh, touch uh, index.html, what is going to happen is a new file called index.html is going to appear in that folder. And also, I'm going to create a directory in here called scripts. So mkdir script. This is where our JavaScript is going to live. That's where we're going to put all of our dot JavaScript or dot JS uh, folders or yeah, dot JS files. And then I'm going to make another um, folder. We're going to make another directory called uh, styles. So MKDIR styles. And uh, that's where all of our uh, CSS is going to uh, yeah, be held. So now I'm going to. I'm going to change directories into styles. So CD uh, styles. And I'm going to make a folder called uh, styles.css. So um, we're going to use touch, touch, uh, and touch is to make files. MKDIR is to make folders or directories uh, as they are called. So touch styles.css. And uh, make, sure, uh, make sure that you're inside of your uh, styles folder, that you have changed directories inside of your styles folder. And um, yeah, so now that is how you create, um, that is how you, create files and folders and navigate around your desktop uh, using the command line. So these are the basic commands. And um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use uh, git 
No. Um, now for git commands, we're going to go back to that folder that I told you guys that I put in the chat. And uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to tell git who you are if you have not done so yet. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do, you're going to have to write this first um, where it says git commands. Uh, uh, our task is to tell git who we are. And basically what it does is configures uh, the name or the, our, the author name and email address uh, to be used with uh, our commits. Note that git strips some characters, for example, trailing periods from user.name. All right, so what we're going to do is git uh, config. Uh, dash dash or get space config space dash dash global space username user dot name uh, and uh, space and then within quotation uh, the double quotes you're gonna put uh, your name so I'm gonna type in my name. I'm gonna type enter. And what's that? What that's gonna do is that just set my the the that tells Git who I am, right? That's uh, that's uh, configuring my my username. Now we're also gonna set up our uh, global uh, username, uh, user email. Um, so we're gonna do Git big dash dash global uh, space user dot name okay and uh and you're gonna enter your email address oh uh, no excuse me use your email i apologize user dot email this and then enter your email So then you're gonna configure uh, your git uh, config. You're gonna configure your user email with git config dash dash global user email and then enter your email and click enter. Um, let me check the chat right quick. All right, so we have set up our username and email. Uh, let me try to get this. There we go. Uh, just like that, perfect. Okay. All right. Um. All right. So I'm gonna enter these for our into our list of Git commands. All right. Perfect. All right. Now, now what we're going to do is I want you to CD um, dot dot to, um, I want you to go to your project one folder, but um, I want you to go to the, to the, to like the root of your project one folder. So I don't want you to be in the directory of, styles um i want you so if you have to uh go to the parent directory to the to the very top of uh you know the root of the project one folder and you know cd dot dot or uh cd into it or whatever you have to do to get there and what i want you to do is i want you to initialize your repository and the way that you're going to do that is or you're going to create a new repository and the way that you're going to do that is you're going to type git And it says initialized empty repository. And so what that's done is uh, if you go to your folder right here and you um, go to view and uh, okay. Now, as you can see, we have a 
hidden folder in here called a dot get. And that's what we have just created by initializing the repository. And basically what this does is it keeps track of all of our, um, all of the changes that we make on our um, repository. Um, <clears throat> okay. So in a repository is, um, uh, let's see. So check out um, a repository. So what you can do now is we can take this um, and we can upload it to uh, to uh, GitHub. So what I want you to do now is we're going to do this the easiest way possible. I want you to open up GitHub in your uh, browser. And I want you to um, I want you to go to the organization that we had just uh, created, and the organization is called OSD or Develops. I'm going to go to my organizations by going down here. And I'm going to click on the organization we just created. And I'm going to create a new repository. And what I'm gonna do is create a repository called project one. And uh, oh, actually we didn't even have to do that. What you could have done is you could have gone up here and clicked create new repository. And uh, you could have simply clicked on this and gone right here and clicked on that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see something right quick. I want to create a project one. So you know what I want you to do? I actually want you to create this on your, I don't want you to create it in um, the organization because I don't think it would allow us to have multiple project one um, directories or yeah, repositories um, in the organization. So I want you to um, go to your own, your personal, uh, Uh, like just not an organization. I want you to go to your personal GitHub account and um, click on that. For me, I think I have a project one in here already. So I'm going to click on, I don't know. I'll just do it in W3 develops cohorts, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type project one and uh, not going to click any of this. Um, not yet. Or actually, yeah, I want you to initialize a readme. And I want you to add uh, MIT license. And uh, create repository. And so the license and readme that we have just created is inside of the repository. Uh, that we just created and basically those are folders so if you click on them you can see you know we have a license and uh, we have our readme which is down here at the bottom and this is so that when people come to your repository or you know they download your repository they can come in here and find out information about it that would be beneficial to the uh, reader all right so now we're going to upload files um, so we're going to click on this right here upload files we're going to go right here to, and we're going to scroll over all this and we're going to drag it into here, into our remote repository. And, uh, oh wait, hold on. So, all right, you know what? It's not going to work simply because there's nothing inside of any of our, uh, folders or anything. So what we're going to have to do, um, first is, 
I want you to open up uh, your index.html file inside of your text editor, which is VS Code. And um, if you type HTML, um, it don't press anything. If you type HTML, don't press enter, don't press anything. Just type HTML and you scroll down you should see something that says something like this, HTML uh, colon, uh, and then uh, five, click on that, and it's gonna give you this uh, basic setup. So I want you to click enter. I mean, I want you to click save, excuse me. I want you to click save, and uh, yeah. So we just saved that. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, drag and drop that over here. And the only thing that's actually gonna go over there is, should be the index.html uh, file. <clears throat> because that's the only uh, file that we have that actually has information in it. All right, so then we're gonna make a commit name. And uh, I don't know, we're just gonna say initial commit. and commit changes. And now, as you can see, we have a index.html file um, inside of our project one folder. Now, another way to do this would be to, uh, let's see, if I wanted to do this another way, uh, I could just upload, so let's go ahead and um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna show you this right quick. I'm gonna follow the little tutorial that the basic uh, git commands um, that this gives us. So now what we can do is we can clone this um, locally. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on this clone or download button right here and we're going to copy that and uh we're going to go into our web project uh web projects folder so i'm going to cd dot dot and uh, i'm going to go to my parent directory and um what i'm going to do now just to make things a little bit more easier I'm going to remove the project one folder completely uh, by uh, clicking rm uh, dir um, project one. I'm going to show you an easier way to uh, upload uh, later, but for now, we're just going to do it this way so that we get through all the commands. So remove directory project one. Oh, okay. So what we're going to have to do is remove a directory with files in it. I think it's RF. Yep. So what we're going to do is uh, RM dash RF uh, dash or yeah, we'll just enter that. So RM uh, dash RF uh, space uh, directory. Oh no, excuse me, not directory. And then the name of your directory. So project one. No spaces. And that removes the directory. And that's a, that's not a git command. That is a command line command. So rm uh, r uh, dash rf um allows you to remove um uh folders or directories with files or folders within them okay so now what we're going to do is now that we have a clean slate there's no project one in here what we are going to do is to clone this so we're going to copy this again 
Um, and uh, we're going to do, we're going to type in git clone. Uh, and then the path to our directory. So before you type git clone, uh, make sure you're on your directory. You're, you're, that you, you know, your current, your, so type in PWD to see your current working directory and make sure you're on your web projects directory. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to type git clone. Okay. And then I want you to paste in that, uh, the, what you just copied from right here the uh, link to your uh, directory, the path to your directory, I want you to uh, uh, paste that right here. So I'm gonna press shift insert, because I have a Windows and that's what I use to insert, uh, and click enter. Or you could just probably right click and paste, and it should be cloning a project one folder into your web projects directory. to you thank you um all right so now we have officially cloned the project one folder from our git hub repository uh from uh we, we we cloned it uh from remotely to um our local machine so we have project one right there and oh also if you are using a mac what you're going to want to do is instead of uh so right here if you're using a mac you if you're using windows you're going to clone with https which is this link right here but if you're using mac or linux you're going to click on use ssh and you're going to use this link right here um i, I don't, i'm not going to get into detail why just there's quirks that are going to happen if you don't so uh for for you know just for reference that's what you're going to do if you're on mac <clears throat> All right, uh, so we just get cloned, we get cloned. Uh, all right, so now what we're gonna do is let's go, let's open up our project folder. Um, close this and I'm gonna open this back up in code. All right, so as you can see, we have our index.html file. And, um, oh, wait. Okay. There we go. Don't mess with me now. <laughs> there we are. Perfect. Okay. And as you can see, we have our index.html, we have our license, and we have our readme all within our uh, directory. So what we're going to do next is let's add some changes. Let's add a H1 uh, to our body. So uh you can just type in h1 uh and then uh hello world all right and then uh click save or uh, save it and um what we're gonna do next is the next step is to do git add so open up your git uh, and navigate your way from web projects back into your projects one folder all right so cd project or let me ls to find the exact name of it i don't know if it's project or projects so it's project so i'm a cd project one and um as, as you can see it says master right there the master stands for master branch uh i'll get more into branches later but basically a branch is just like a uh, 
it's like a it's like a version or it's a it's a it's a branch of uh, your 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 code. So you can work on different branches. So for example, I can create a new uh, branch uh, and name it whatever I want. And what it would do is it would make a copy of my master, and then I can make changes on it, and it wouldn't affect the master branch. It'd be like my own little side branch, my side branch where I'm just working on stuff. And what I can do is I can like, uh, once I made the commits that I want, um, I can, um, once, once I make the commits that I want, I can uh, uh, push the changes to my master branch without, um, you know, doing any work in the master branch and messing it up. Um, all right, so what we just did is get clone. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add git init and git clone to our notes. All right, so we have three, we have three parts. We have staging, we have the, we have, we have the staging, um, we have, we have our working directory, which is basically this right here, like our, all of our code that's like held locally when we click save, it's, uh, you know, it, it's added to our, um, our working directory. And when we, uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it um, by, uh, to the staging area, which is part two of the Git flow. Uh, so Git, Git has three parts, it has the, the working directory, it has your, uh, your, your staging, um, the, the staging area and it has the head. So the staging area is all of the uh, the commits and um, all of the all the changes I should say not commits all the changes that you've made, um, and it adds those changes uh, and keeps track of those changes um, and it adds them to the staging area. So if you click save, it adds it to the working directory. But what we're going to do now is git add and that's going to add it to the staging area. And from the staging area. After we do a git add, we're gonna do a git commit, and that's gonna bring it. Uh, that's gonna uh, uh, push it to the head, or that's gonna commit those changes to the head. Um, so basically, you have the uh, the you have that those those you know that workflow because let's say you're doing something and you make a change that you didn't want to make, instead of automatically pushing it directly to the head, you could um, what you would have is you would be able to revert the the git add and um not push that change and you can just like edit it or whatever and it wouldn't like uh automatically be pushed to the head like because we all know what it's like to just make a mistake really quick so this kind of helps us out in that aspect so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a git add and add the changes that have been saved to our working directory which is you know part one of the git workflow so let's begin so we're on project one and uh, so we're gonna do git add. Okay, git add, and then the name of, what you would do normally is you would add, uh, so I'm gonna ls right quick and see what files we have in here. All right, so we have an index, a license, and a readme. Um, and I'm gonna do a git status. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell me the, uh, the files that, um, so when you save a file, like I said, it adds it to your working directory and it's, um, and it tells you, it tells you if you have anything in your staging area yet. So right now when we do get status, I'm gonna add that to our, to our commands, get status. And it tells us, uh, like I said, it tells us um, what we have, you know, the files that have been modified or not modified and committed or not committed. Um, uh, so it's telling me right now that I, you know, I don't, that I'm not, I'm not that this index.html file has been modified, um, but it, it, it's not being staged uh, for a commit. Um, and so, you know, it's not in the staging area, so it's not being ready to, for a commit, and a commit is when you, you know, when you push it to your 
um, remote repository on GitHub. So it's not, it's not ready to go there yet. It's not in area number two. It's still in the working directory area number one. Um, so if I do do a git commit and uh, try to push this code to the local um, remote repository, it's not going to go um, there because I haven't added it to the staging area yet. So what I'm going to do is git add x.html. And um, another, another way to do this would be git add with a uh, period at the end. Um, uh, just like, like this, git add period. And what that would do is that would add all of the unmodified files. I mean, of the, of the mod, this would add all of the, the, the files that you've changed, um, to the, uh, staging area, but that's not, that's not recommended. It's recommended to just enter the name of the file that you've changed. So I'm just going to enter index.html. <laughs> And I'm going to click enter. What that has done is I've pressed, press get status now, type in get status now. Now it's telling me that it is in the staging area. It's in area number two. Um, I'm just going to up here, I'm going to type in uh, get workflow. And uh, so we have the staging area. Uh, we have a working directory. have our staging area and we have our head and uh, the, the, the head goes by different names. Um, I, I'm not sure of all of them right now. I guess you can call it remote repository. I don't know, but I'm just going to call it the head for now. Um, and that's, uh, you know, professionals will know what you're saying. Um, let's see. So we have added that to our staging area. So now to, um, push those changes, uh, how do I get it to say master? All right, so um, if, uh, if you're having problems um, installing or cloning a repository, um, I recommend you go and check out this, uh, this article. Um, generating a new SSH key and adding it to um, the SSH, SSH agent for, um, this is for people with a Mac um, that, are, that are having uh, trouble um, cloning a repository. You're gonna have to go through these steps and um, so everybody can benefit. Um, Actually, uh, I did it over HTTP, uh, yeah, uh, PS and it already did fine. Oh, it's working fine? Yeah, I just like other, like, I just did with HTTPS, see if it works, and it did. Yeah, the only difference is, like, so with SSH um, within Mac, you won't, so when you use HTTPS, it'll ask when you, like, push to GitHub, it'll ask you for your username and password, as opposed to, like, with this SSH, it basically just allows you to run, like, the push, to push all your commits from your local computer out. To the uh, to the master repository, um, it it won't. That's the only biggest difference between the two that you run into. Oh, it's just like convenience. Basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll I'll look at it in my free time. <laughs> but uh, thanks for your help, guys. That was real helpful. Thanks. All right. Um. So so um. Now what you're gonna have to do, dude, is um. One second. All right. So we just added uh, that that has nothing to do with everybody else. Um, hopefully, like if, if you're having a problem cloning, just use HTTPS, um, the HTTPS to clone. Um, and so now we are at git add. Um, and let's proceed. So we just did git add and we added, yep, we added uh, the file to the staging area. And you know, after we saved it, we added that to the staging area. We did get status to check it, and it's uh, in the staging area. And uh, now, what we're going to do is uh, commit. 
so we're gonna do we're gonna type in git uh, dash m um, and then you're gonna add a commit message within the double quotation marks so uh, Add a detailed commit like um, I added a h1 with hello world, or I just added an h1 to the body, or I added an h1. Uh, hit enter. And uh, now it has added the file uh, from the staging area into the head. So if you go over here to your GitHub account, you should be able to click here and uh, let's try to refresh. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, no. Um, so that was just a commit. So that committed it to, um, that committed it. I'm about to check my Git workflow again, but basically that's like committing it, telling it that um, it's ready to push it to the head. Um, yeah, so now what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do a git push. And with that, you type in uh, git push origin master. And then um, you're gonna enter your uh, credentials for oh. Set up, and now you should see that it has pushed uh, your files to uh, the master. Um, and now, if you go to index.html file, you should see "Hello World" is in there. Congratulations, you have just made your first push. All right. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna type in get status. And there's nothing to commit now because uh, all the changes are uh, up to date with our uh, master branch, which is I mentioned earlier we have different branches and uh, well if you make different branches um, it's always good to have a production branch so we're gonna create that later but this is our master branch all of uh, this code right here um, and it's update so status all right, so now we're gonna create one more repository right quick and uh, this time we're going to connect it. We're going to make a project two. So go ahead and um, go back to your projects folder in your um, terminal and see to web projects. And uh, mkdir project two. 
created a directory called Project Two, <clears throat> and then uh, within it, we're gonna actually we're gonna CD into it. Don't forget to CD into it. Change directories into it, and um, Project Two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an index.html file. So index or touch. Uh, actually, I'm gonna show you guys echo. Um, and uh, I gotta add, add, uh, get add and get commit and get push. Um, so now I'm going to show you guys echo. Um, this is a command line command and it's the, it's basically the same thing as touch, uh, except you can add words into your index.html or into your files. You can add text into your files, uh, as you create them. So echo. Um, world. And so these uh, the end signs, and actually, make sure you're outside of the uh, hello world text and quotation marks, and then. And uh, index.html. So hello world is going to be inside of your index.html file that you are creating. And we look inside of project two. See a file in here that says, I'm gonna close this. You should see a file inside of here that says, The world. There we go. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this file. We're gonna connect. Um, instead of cloning it, we're gonna connect our lo our our local repository. Or actually, first we have to initialize it. So we have to initialize it. Let's get init. Here, get init. Okay, we initialized it. Now that empty, I mean that uh, hidden file is in there. And then we're gonna do git commit. Or no, git add. Uh, and then we're gonna do a git commit. And uh, I don't know, initial commit. Then what we're going to do is get remote add origin. And go over to your, you actually have to create a new repository. Do not initialize README and do not add a license this time around because it has to be the same, it has to be empty. 
Um, that way you can add the files that are on your local repository to the yes. remote repository without having any problems. And then, um, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, or actually, let's go down here, get remote add origin. And if now, as you can see, it actually tells us what to do right here. After, uh, so we can just copy this into there, or you can just type in this URL after the git add origin that we have just typed in. And git push dash u. Origin master. All right. And um, now that has. Uh, that has pushed um, our local repository, or our, 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 that's pushed that index.html to our repository. As you can see, it is, it is uploaded. It's uploaded the file. So um, what's next? So yeah. Also, John, you, you can always, whenever you set or add all those origins, you can always check git remote dash, git space remote dash, space dash v and then I'll let you know what like repository is pointed towards. Hold on, what was that command again? Git. Git space remote space dash V. So that'll, that'll let you know the origin. Uh, so basically what your computer is leaning towards in that repository, whatever rep repository you're actually in, that'll show you like the master, right? The whatever master, whatever branch you're in or origin. Um, if you ever want to like, if because you know the command when you add an origin or set it, you you know you change it, um, it never really confirms anything. It just you you know it works because you press enter and it gives you a new command line. Just yeah, it doesn't say it doesn't say error. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. That's the only way that you would know that it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what it says here, it says it list all currently configured remote repositories. Right. So like, so technically, so let's say you have a develop branch, right? Because um, mm -hmm. Git workflow, I guess, works like that. So there's, a, so let's say there's more than one or like branch that you've made. Uh, that will let you, that will also be under there too. So like if you have a develop branch, it'll say de develop in, in the URL and then the fetch or push. So. Okay. We're going to create a branch next. So let's, uh, we're going to start out next. Yeah. Cool, cool. So next, we're going to create a new branch and switch to it. Um, so what you can do, you can either type in git branch, and it'll and then uh, the 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 branch the branch name, and it'll um, create a branch. Or um, we're, we're, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a branch and uh, uh, switch to it. So we're going to type in git. Uh, Check out, switch to it at the same time, and then dash B, and then we're gonna name our branch production. So it's always, it's always um, quality advice to um, always make sure that you have a production branch as well as a master branch and to um, make sure that you do your work in your production branch and then uh, so that way you don't mess up anything that you did and, 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 and then you push it to your master and then your entire site's messed up. So you, you, you make the changes in the production branch and then you, you add them to the master afterwards. You merge it with the, into the master afterwards. And we'll, we'll go over that later. But for now, we're just going to, um, for now, we're just going to create a new branch and we're going to switch to it. So we're going to get checkout, uh, uh, dash B, um, and we're going to name it uh, production. And, we're gonna it and um, if we do a git branch dash a, we can list all of our branches. And uh, now you can see that uh, it's we have a 
just created a production branch. It's listed under our um, branches. Um, okay. And to switch from one branch to another, you can do git checkout. So we'll, let's switch to our master branch, git checkout. And what, 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 um, with the, with, with, before I, we move on, what we just did is we, we created a copy of the master branch. Uh, so production is basically an exact copy of the production of the master branch. And um, now you can start uh, adding changes and, and commits and um, pushing uh, those commits uh, to uh, the production branch and it will not affect the master branch as long as you send those commits uh, exclusively to um, the production branch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to show you, we're going to do git checkout and that will, and, uh, we're going to type in master. And uh, this switched us to our master branch and we're going to git checkout back to our production branch. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. So get check out production. All right. Um, and now we're back in our production branch. And um, let's see. So if you um, type in git branch, list all of the branches that you have in um in your repo uh, and it tells you what branch you're currently on that's why it's um as the, uh, the, the the asterisk next to it um and if you want to um delete uh the the feature branch uh you do uh git uh branch uh, dash D and the branch name. Oh, but you cannot delete the branch if you are currently in the branch. So you would have to switch to master and then delete it from delete the production branch while you're in the master branch because you can't delete the branch that you're currently in. Um, or you can't delete the branch that you currently have checked out, which means the branch that you're currently in. Uh, so now what we wanna do is we wanna push this production branch to um, our remote repository. So I'm just gonna add this to our notes. Right, let's see, open up our terminal and git branch, um, git push origin and then the branch name. So git branch uh, excuse me. push origin branch name. Branch name is production. And now if you look on our repository, uh, I'll refresh. If you look on your repository, you should see that there is now a production branch under your branches. Uh, right here so you can go over there and then in the in there is an exact uh is an exact copy of the uh, master or if you made any changes um before you pushed it it would uh, reflect those changes um let's carry on um Push, uh, you, so you can push all branches to your uh, remote repository uh, with uh, this command, git push all origin, or uh, dash dash all origin. Um, and you can delete a branch on your remote repository with uh, this uh, command right here, git push origin 
and uh, the branch name, or a colon, uh, a space colon in the branch name. Okay. Now, update the uh, update from uh, from the remote repository. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's say uh, I made like let's say somebody else um, made. Uh, let's say I was working with like an older copy of my repository, or if there's multiple people working on the repository with me, um, and they made a change, right? Um, if I just, uh, just, um, pushed or, or did a commit or, uh, something and, um, I tried to, 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 to push my changes to that repository, um, it would, uh, I would have a, a, a conflict, um, if, uh, because, um, it wouldn't be up to date or in sync, um, or if I tried to do a merge or something, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't, it would mess up because it wouldn't be up to date. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a git pull, and this isn't really gonna do anything because um, our file is up to date with um, our remote repository. But let's say it wasn't. Let's say how about this? I will. Let's go in here and let's add a change to our production branch from um, inside of GitHub. Right, so hello world, and then I go down here and let's go on the next line. What's up, dude? Right, and then we scroll down and uh, commit, add a commit message, and right. and. We commit that. Now inside of there is, uh, what's up, dude? So now there's a change in there, and it's not on my local repository, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a get pull. I'm going to pull that change, um, uh, fetch and merge changes on the remote server to uh, my, uh, my, my working directory. So we do that by, as it says, by doing a get pull. Now, if we go to uh, if we go to our file, um, let's open it up in the text editor. Where are we? <clears throat> okay, so it's not showing because um, because I made that change in our production branch and not in our master branch. Um, so let's go back, and I'm just going to add this. I'm add it to my master. This is, you know, you're, you're really not supposed to do this, um, but this is just um, to show you a uh, uh, concept of what I'm talking about. And if we switch over to git checkout our master branch and do a git pull. Uh, once this is done pulling, now 
what you should see is uh, if I open up this, open this code. Aha. What's up, dude? There you go. And that's what a Git pull does. It, it pulls the changes from the um, remote repository into your um, local directory, uh, into your working directory. All right, now to merge a different branch into your active branch. Okay, so now let's say, let's go to our production branch, Git checkout. I'm sorry, Git checkout production. And um, let's see, I'm gonna open this up. Well, the reason I like the terminal inside of VS Code is because I'm able to do things like, uh, for example, uh, Oh, I gotta open up my folder. Um, well, one thing I can do in code is uh, let us navigate to uh, our folder and uh, web and then project one, project one, or two, excuse me, project two. And um, what I'm able to do is it'll switch the branches for me inside of the um, text editor. And so to open a project, I'm actually going to cd um, dot dot. Uh, I'm gonna I'm 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 type code. And this is the name for the text editor. And so you can type code project two. This does is this is gonna open the project within my VS Code text editor for me. There it goes. It just makes it easier for me to work. Um, and to open up the, the terminal, you can press control tilde. Okay. So from here on out, this is what I'm going to be using. Okay, so close this and open up my index.html folder. And as we can see, it says hello world. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a git pull. Just to make sure I have all the changes that are uh, repository and uh, that I have them on uh, Let's check out all right so I'm already in the production branch. Um, and then I have to set my upstream.
right, so I'm tracking, I'm tracking my production branch. I just copied that uh, where it says set uh, dash dash set upstream to origin. Um, yeah, I don't mean to confuse anybody. Um, so let me just exit out of that and uh, go back to where you guys were at. Uh, open up my bash. Uh, let's see. Back to that folder. Okay. Um, where are we at now? Uh, right on. And so what I'm gonna do now is open up, uh, I'm actually gonna CD uh, to the parent directory and I'm gonna open up code or I'm gonna open up my project two. code so that's opening and it's opening up my production branch Let's see what happens if I do a git checkout. Uh, check out the master. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta go into my projects folder. So CD projects two. And then now I'm going to check out the master. All right, so yeah, I had to um, pull the changes from my uh, um, for um, them to take effect on here. And now everything's up to date. So now what we're gonna do is, so we did get pull. And now let's make a change on our production branch. So I'm on my production branch now. Um, and uh, I'm type, how are you? So it's weird that I'm talking in my text that are like this, but I don't care. We're good friends. <laughs> how are you? I'm fine. Uh, save that. And what you're going to do is git add index.html. Uh, um, add line three. Uh, and um, what's the next folder? Now we're going to push. Get push. Origin production. All right, right on. So now that our changes have been pushed, um, let's go ahead and check out uh, the master branch and see what's happening over there. Good, check out uh, master. All right, so as you can see, when I switch to my master, inside of my VS Code text editor, um, it, 
it changed the uh, it changed the it, it changed it for me. It just automatically changed it. This is why I recommend VS Code. Um, I believe Adam does it as well, but I prefer VS Code. Um, so, all right. So we just checked out um, the mastery branch, and now what I want to do is I'm going to go. We're going to go back to the production branch. So get check out production. Like I said, you can use the tab as you're typing words to um, automatically uh, fill them out. It'll. All right, so we just checked out the production. And as you see again, it just switched our view to production. And um, now we're going to do a merge. So the safest way, um, the way I like to do a merge is I like to first pull, um, I like to merge my master branch into, I like to pull all the changes that are in my master branch, okay, to my production branch. So first what I do is get merge. While I'm in my production branch, what I do is get merge production and I merge it with the production branch simply so there's no conflicts. So get merge production, or no, get merge master. Ah, see, now it's telling me what conflicts there are. So auto merging index.html conflict, content merge conflict and index.html, auto merge fail, fix conflicts, and then commit the results. Oh, hold on, let me see. Get uh, status. Okay, so we haven't modified, we haven't, um, we haven't uh, committed our, or pushed our files. So let's see, git add. Let's uh, fix this up here. So master, let's erase all this. Save that. And then get add. Message uh, resolved. I don't know. Resolved conflicts. Yep. All right. Now get push. No. Uh, wait. Should it be get push? Yeah, get push. Um, master. Before we merge the master, let me go to let's check out master. Get check out master. Let's see if there's anything that's not committed over here. So get status. So everything, the working tree is clean. So we're gonna check out the production branch again. All right, good. Oh, okay. So it's up to date with the, uh, it's up to date with the master. So now what we can do is now it is safe to um, check, uh, go, let's check out our master, get check out. Master. And um, now what we can do is we can safely merge our production branch into the changes that are in our production branch into our master. So now let's do get merge. And this is gonna merge our production branch into the changes in our production branch into our master. So production. And 
get status. And voila, we are up to date with the, our production branch and our master branch are up to date and we just merged that successfully. Uh, we resolved the conflicts and yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and open up our, let's, let's, let's uh, switch over to our production. Let's check out our production branch, get check out production. And um, let's go ahead and add some, let's add some uh, something else. Um, I'm fine. I'm just writing, I'm just writing code. No, just, just practicing Git. Okay, save that. And let's try out what it says. Let's uh it says git diff. Uh view all the merge conflicts, view all the conflicts. I don't ever use this. Um I've never used it before, but this might be my first time. So let's let's try it out. Get all right. So as you can see, it tells you that down here uh, that there is a um, difference, and it's showing you the line that's different, which is pretty neat. It's uh, previewing our. Uh, it's letting us preview our changes and actually I want to <laughs> want to change that because I spelled practicing wrong. And uh let's see. After you manually Resolved any conflicts, you mark the changed file. Right, so let's see. Uh, so what we're going to do now is the same thing we just did. Uh, Git, or actually, no, we're going to add that. Actually, before we add it, let's uh, let's let's try out Git diff dash dash base index.html ah, and one other thing I would like to add um, if you type in git, uh, just git it will give you a list of git commands so I would put that at the top of the commands list and also um, so git dash dash help. Let's see what that what that pops up. So it gives us the same thing. Yep. And these are all the git commands. Um, and if I type uh, help, it'll give me a list of all the command line commands. All right. So, um, Besides that, let's go. Good. If base in the file name, so file name. 
right, so if I do git diff index.html, it also shows me the um, differences. Um, uh, it allows me to view all the merge conflicts. Um, uh, basically like preview the changes um, between um, the, my, the files on my different branches. All right, and let's uh, try that last one as well. Git. Then uh, source branch. So what's my source? We can do both of them. So we'll, we'll use those interchangeably to see what happens. So I'll say my source branch is production and the target branch is master. See what happens, get diff production. Er, all right, let's switch those up, see what happens. Master. Okay. Um, I don't know. All right, so. All right, besides that, let's finish up what we're doing here. Add, we're on our production, so git add. And we're gonna add the changes where we just added. Um, this right here, uh, line four, we just uh, added that, so git add. Um, and then uh, commit, git commit. Um, with the message, it's not recommended that you say line four, but I'm kind of lazy. So, all right, instead of that, I'll show you guys right. Um, I added, I don't know, I added, um, since we don't have any tags, I can't say we added a tag. Added content. All right, and get push or get commit. We have to commit it. Uh, or yep, dash M, let's leave a message. And what's our message gonna be? Oh no, we just committed it. All right, cool, so get push. Push origin. Uh, and it, the origin is a production branch. So origin production, enter. And it is pushing all of that to the production branch. And it's finished. And now what we're gonna do is, um, don't. But I'm gonna do one more time. I'm gonna merge uh, the changes, uh, the, the, my master, um, the, the, the files. I'm gonna merge the master in the production right quick. Um, take all the, merge all the changes that's in the master in the production just to make sure we don't have any conflicts. So get merge master. I said earlier, this is my preferred way to merge. That way we uh, resolve all conflicts be, uh, on the production branch instead of merging, uh, uh, resolving the conflicts on the master branch. So get merge master. Um, make sure you only have one git. All right, so it's up to date. And now we're gonna um, check out the master. So git check out. And we're going to merge, get merge, production. All right, and now that has been successfully merged, get status. And we are up to date. All right, let's see. All right, so let's say, um, well, you guys really don't have to worry about this, um, but let's say that you're, you know, dealing with releases, different versions of your code. Um, what you do is, uh, I'm gonna switch over to check out my last of my production branch. Um, get tag. Remote 
get tag 1.0.0, just how it says, and then commit ID. I don't know what that means because I've never used uh, tags before. Um, so I'm just going to skip over this. Undo local changes. All right, so um, so also um, you can undo um, local changes. So let's say we. Oh, we have a message. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> um, yeah, that would have been like an Uber fail, eh? <laughs> uh, let's see. Get <laughs> Um, all right, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and let's do a bunch of stuff, a bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? Save that. We're going to save it and let's see if this is going to set up. Okay. So let's get checkout. Um, index.html index or dash dash excuse me dash dash space index.html see what happens ah and there we go it just undid those changes for us nice so that's going to come in handy i'm going to save that to our notes Okay, and um, so yeah, that basically undoes our, uh, if you mess up, you can replace your changes in your working tree with the last content in head. Um, changes already added to the index as well as new files will be kept. Okay. So, um, okay. And, um, so that's, that's basically it guys. Um, and girls, whoever is here, uh, now you have officially used Git. Um, you created two projects, um, uploaded them to GitHub. I'm gonna show you guys a trick right quick though. Um, maybe we should go over fetch right quick. Uh, real quick. Uh, eh, like, I don't know, I've never really used fetch. I've used it, but I've never really understood it. Honestly, instead to drop all your local changes and commits, fetch the latest history from the server and point. So basically all you guys really need is the few command, like you guys, need these command line commands and um, you know you should know the three stages of the workflow um, and uh, you know you have to know how to configure your global username you know you have to know how to initialize your repository you should know how to clone a repository you should know git status um, git branch a uh, shows you all the branches git add um, what does it do git add it adds the changes. Um, it adds your file to the, um, you know, uh, the staging area. Uh, git commit. Um, it commits the changes to the uh, staging area, and git push pushes the changes to the um, to the head. All right. So git remote add origin. Um, this allows you to. 
it's like a connect. So let's say you have your local directory and you didn't, let's say you didn't clone your project. Um, right. Remember you didn't uh, with project two, we didn't clone it. We simply created the project locally and then we added the origin and then we added the um, link, uh, the URL to the repository. And remember we did not add any, uh, we did not add a readme or a license. So we'll get add, uh, Get remote at origin does that. Um, get remote v shows. Um, uh, get remote dash v shows. Uh, the it shows the URL that the branch is connected to. Yeah, it shows the URL that the branch is connected to. Um, um, so basically, all it does is like list the currently configured remote repositories. Um, like he just said, it shows the URL that's that, that your repository is connected to. Um, get checkout switches branches. Uh, get branch. Um, it uh, lists all the branches in your repository and uh, tells you what branch you're in. Um, get branch uh, dash D deletes the branch. Um, Yeah, so those are that's that's basically all like all you really need to know. Um everything else, you know, get checkout, um uh, dash dash to delete the uh production uh to delete the branch. That's you know um that's 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 good to know as well, maybe sometimes. Um so yeah. Um so now you guys are ready. <laughs> Congratulations. And, um, you know, you guys were fantastic and you all did very well in your, um, uh, today with, um, with this, does anybody have uh, any questions, comments, um, anything that you're having trouble with, uh, please let me know. Uh, What's up, dude? All right, so yeah, uh, I I think uh, I think. Oh, sorry. So, um, sorry, Jonathan. It's Adam. My bad. <laughs> oh, bad. Hey, uh, so I guess probably one thing because I realized this was like a lot of information for somebody, and right. like the only reason, like. I guess the only reason why uh, <laughs> uh, I'm familiar with all this is because I've stepped in a bunch of landmines, but I remember like first learning, I remember the first like time that kind of ran the same scenario where I just wanted to like make a web page and learn HTML and CSS and like was somewhat familiar with it, but then had to learn like Git and command line. So I guess uh, for anybody that feels like super overwhelmed, um, maybe we can go over like why you need to know this stuff or like a, a quick like, what what's the benefits of, of knowing these things like uh like git and and getting com comfortable with your command line because like i'm sure like most people um you know for me like before i started using linux i used windows or mac and like had a had something there like a physical interface that did all that for me rather than having to go like into the computer and start telling it what to do via command line so maybe that Yeah, if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to um, shout out. And one other thing I'm going to show you guys right quick, and um, this is pretty useful. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your GitHub pages. Uh, so if you go here and type in gh-pages, uh, we're going to create that. And see, I'm not even sure. I think they, uh, they, they made it so you don't even have to have a GH pages branch. But um, so we're going to go down here to <laughs> look at that. It's already set up. So once you created that branch, uh, you have this, your site is published. So all the, the, the um, so now you can go right here, open this up in a new tab. 
And uh, it's going to take about five to ten. Oh, look, it's already loaded, dude. Look at that. Hello, world. What's up, dude? It's already, it's already, uh, it's already up and running. So if you make your website, uh, I mean, if you, if you, if you want to like uh, publish the changes that you made, um, basically you can make a GH Pages branch, and you know you can copy this URL and uh, you know keep keep it. In, this is basically the link to your website. Okay. So once you add and commit and push, those are the basics right there. Get add, get commit, get push. Those are the basics. Those are like the main, that's what you need right there. Okay. So once you, once you, once you push the changes and you have um, a repository with, uh, you know, index.html file and, you know, the file has content in it. Now you're able to um, go and voila, you have your website up and running, you know, you can, and this is what your personal portfolios are going to be. Uh, this is how you're going to host your personal portfolios using uh, the GH pages. Um, so any changes that you make to the mat, um, to the, uh, uh, the GH pages branch, um, you, I think you can set it to the master branch as well. Yeah. So you could set it so it's it's currently being built from the master branch. So any changes that you um, make to the master branch now, now that we change that, it will uh, be reflected in uh, this right here. Um, that's this, uh, you know, that, that link right there. It's, so it's being hosted. So what I recommend you do is, you know, just copy this um, link right here, copy. And let's go ahead and you, also you can add a custom domain. Um, I used to have w3develops.org actually hosted on GitHub pages for about a year. And um, the only thing is, uh, you know, it's actually secure with HTTPS, but do not put, uh, like don't have people try to log in on your website and stuff like that. Cause that's not what it's made for. It's just for like static sites, like a, like a personal portfolio, like a regular landing page, a project or anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here and let's click over here. And you know, this is just to make it easier for people to get to it. Uh, paste that in there, uh, where it says website, you know, maybe add a description. This is, um, project two, save that. And now whenever somebody comes or you come to your repository, you can simply click on there and it'll take you to the website. So if like a employer or somebody comes um, to look at your repository, they won't have to download this and, you know, open it up in a local host. They can just click this and go see what code you, uh, what, what, what you have coded. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Like if anybody has any questions on um, GitHub pages or Git or the command line, please don't be afraid to shout out. Um, I see we have a question. Let's see. I just wanted to say that I have learned a lot about Git and GitHub today than the past two years combined. I made my first clone push and pull and I'm ecstatic. Dude, you need to give yourself a uh, round of applause, all of you, because um, you were all fantastic and you all did a very, very good job. All right, your page is saying it's not there. So what you might have to do is you might have to wait about five minutes. Um, but let's see, uh, go ahead and share your page with me right quick. So I can, uh, we can troubleshoot it right quick and, um, let's check it out. It's there, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. A five to reload. I reloaded. It's re it's loaded. Try Yeah. Try it. Uh, yeah. Try a five to reload. It's a, yeah, it does take a few minutes to set up. Um, it like, so if you make a change, it might take about five to seven minutes for the change to reflect um, because there are a ton of people using this and it's free. So, you know, it's not like using a regular cPanel or uh, FTP um, hosting. That's cool, dude. Um, 
like sometimes it might you might get confused be like oh I, what did i do wrong but honestly like that um that does happen where like you think you did something wrong but if you wait just a few minutes like five ten minutes um the changes will be reflected um sometimes uh you'll notice you messed up or something and that could be you know a little annoying because it does take that long to figure out that you did something wrong <laughs> but you know it's it's all learning experience and it's all um just part of uh just part of the process guys girls like this is um what you do you guys are problem solvers and you guys have learned git and github today uh, i tried and it didn't work i'll just uh check in a bit um jason when i click on when i click on it it's uh it's working for me i don't know why it's not working for you it's, it's kind of weird Very odd. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna stop recording now. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we're not going anywhere. Um,